I hate being filmed when I look like I'm completely incompetent. Interesting. Could this be the reason it's taken us more than two years to almost, almost, I keep saying that. It's hard. Complete the restoration of our 1975 Bedford, former fire truck, home on wheels extraordinaire to be. Probably not. And although there is still quite a lot oh, to do, there's a lot of bits in this one. We've come a long way through the months of sanding, welding, grinding, painting, rebuilding, sandblasting, oh the sandblasting, and now here we are with the end in sight. Of course, a super powerful pair of binoculars might be required to see it, but we are feeling motivated. Do you need a hand with that? Yeah. And in this week's video, we are flexing our mighty muscles as we reattach the restored rear leaf springs to the shiny rear axle, and then limber up to the task of dismantling the absolutely massive front axle. We're on the home straight, folks, so make sure to subscribe, because it's all starting to come together at last. It's so weird. I thought the radiator would be right at the front. Maybe. In fact, things are happening so fast around here right now, we've barely been able to keep up with ourselves. After sandblasting all of the rear leaf springs, Tim had primed the first set and reassembled them before I even noticed. All I caught was the aftermath of his efforts, which probably tells you all you need to know. <laughs> The last one. Oh, this is the second of the rear leaf spring sets. First one is on the floor in red oxide. So that's uh, 46 leaves, which is uh, 92 sides, front and back. I think I need a holiday. Anyway, we're done. Leaf springs finished. Yes. Get the tea on! So, yeah, a lot has been going on just this last week or so since we got the new compressor that you would have seen in the last video. Things have happened really, really quickly. <laughs> For a change. And it's great because, well, we're the beginning of September now, and as you're probably all aware, if you're in the UK, we're in the middle of an amazing heat wave. So we'll just catch you up with where we are <laughs> before we go any we further. We went to Trago. 80 quid's worth of rattle cans. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it wasn't just these. Uh, yeah, we've been really busy. We've done all the plating that's needed for the two rear leaf springs, so that's all in front of you. All the little bits that need painting have been done. Also done the radiator ones there, so now we've got some paint. We can finish the radiators, put them on, and we have the, um, the hardware for them too. Yeah, it was a lot of sandblasting. And it happened really, really fast because the new sandblasting setup is really, really super fast. Three leaf springs done in one week, which we think yeah, probably would have taken a month. It was hard, it was still hard work, but it was considerably faster. And he did, I mean, he did all of it, by the way. I mean, I literally turned my back for a couple of days and went and did something else and I came back and it was done. I was like, oh. So I've kind of modified as we've been going along how, how we've been treating these and painting them. We've painted these slightly different in an oil-based red oxide primer because I thought it was a bit more compatible with the Oatrile oil, which we're still using. Still not painting between the leaves totally, but a little bit more on the edges and painting them a little bit more before we assembled them. And then now they are put back to wherever their packs, we are now gonna go over and spray them sat in black. Our next dilemma is actually getting them bolted on somehow because as I think we mentioned in the last video, the rear leaf springs are insanely heavy. And we've got two choices. We can either mount the leaf spring onto the axle and then lift the axle into place, or we can try and get the leaf spring in position, which will probably be easier to get onto the chassis, but then you've got the, eh, we don't know. We're just gonna make it up as we go along, see what happens. Moving forward in this video, we were just having a chat and thinking, oh, we're not really quite sure what to tackle next, but given the circumstances of the good weather and what is actually left, we think that we are going to be tackling the front axle. We're going to have a look at the manuals, which were very kindly gifted to us, so thanks again for that, Martin. And 
leading on from the front axle, that obviously then takes us into the future a little bit with the wheels, which we're also having a slight dilemma with what to do with them in the shorter term and the longer term, but we will talk about that in more detail probably in the coming weeks. Yep, anyway, so uh, with these in hand, I am going to get on, I think, and uh, sort out these rear leaf springs. Oh, it all back together. We now have a fresh supply of paint for me, hopefully not to waste. With 80 quid's worth of satin black rattle cans in hand, we were finally able to wantonly spray the rear leaf springs in their final top coat. As Tim mentioned, he went through several different approaches on prepping and painting each of the four sets of leaf springs, finally setting on a covering of Oatrol oil and a light coat of red oxide primer, which worked well together, before applying the top coat. Then it was time to finish off the radiator, also in satin black. Yes, we know it probably won't stay looking like this forever, but it isn't half satisfying for now. And well, you know, that show and shine award won't win itself. I to watch you a little bit. how this actually looks when it's... Well, you know where we... You're sitting on the radio. Yeah, the top cover and where the seats are comes down here. So the air has to come up through the grill and then up into this whole area. And the front metal goes down like that. So the air comes up through here. That's why there's those little bits of um, rubbery stuff to stop the air going around it. But yeah, you sit on the radio. It's, yeah. I, I don't know what to say about that. <laughs> well, we failed to get this in in the last video, so I guess it's now at the beginning of this video, which is uh, really cool. <laughs> oh God. steady there and I'm going to lift all of that over the drum onto that piece of wood all right. and I don't even know if the heights are right so that's the difficulty okay also when it goes onto these at an angle it's going to want to tip it so you're on the pole trying to keep it from tipping over that's going to go down as I lift this side up okay it's going to be tricky isn't it moments. It was super heavy and very awkward, also roasting hot, not complaining, just saying, and one of those times when another pair of hands would have been really, uh, handy. But more patience and less panic, and we got there in the end. Oh. Right. Come on, Ambulance. Oh, is it the right way around? 
Yeah. Oh, you're hilarious. Phase one. Yeah. Right. Cup of tea. I'll put the bolts in now. These bolts are uh, the same size as the wheel nuts. Uh, 33 millimeter. Quite handy that uh, on these old vehicles they think about stuff like that. Like only needing six or four spanners to do the whole truck. thing on there again to stop the, the bolt moving and the lock washer on the back we made a right old mess putting this on I tried to uh, negate too much damage but uh, damage is my middle name uh, as we put the uh, the leaves in, uh, this paint isn't as strong as our epoxy, which kind of is really good. It shows us how good our epoxy is, but um, it's scratched up against stuff, and uh, we, you know we had blocks of wood under it, and was like levering it, and it's sort of damaged the paint surface. So I mean, I'm not trying to make this so that it looks perfect. I just don't want it to go rusty. So I'm putting paint over where the where the damage has occurred. Don't look too closely. We'll lose points in the show and shine. As you've probably seen, we managed to get this uh, first leaf spring hung up on it. It was a little tricky. And then we've gone around and now put the second leaf spring on, which we didn't film, hence it went a lot smoother. And uh, that went on pretty easy, actually. I thought that might be a bit tricky, but it went on nice. All I need to do now is um, connect the axle onto these uh, using the uh, shackle bolts and then we're, we're together so either I've got to lift up the axle to meet up with this or somehow tilt up the whole of the frame to bring it down I think moving the axle up would probably be a bit easier but it is heavy so that's the, that's the plan we just put these two together bolt it up and then uh, wow whole back end is going together I can't believe how uh, randomly pretty close I was to actually getting it in the right place by dropping the axle down where I did. It's made my life a lot easier, hasn't it? Just smooth, wasn't it? It's really nice when it just clicks in. You just know that it's it's gone in properly. Uh, even the um the middle bit doesn't need support anymore. I need support. You always have support. Set. The axle. The whole frame is sitting on the axle. That means the shock absorbers will fit on it now. <laughs> You can bolt all those stuff together. Obviously it needs the, uh, the, the bolts going over here. That'll tie it, the two together permanently. Pretty much reserved, a cup of tea.
wow, this is like one of the last things to get done. <laughs> this is amazing. Uh, started taking it apart and well, there's a lot of bits in this one. Came in this morning after um, knocking a few things about, catching oil coming out of the, uh, the outside hub bit and that's like perfect timing because it's so close to the top. And the same thing happened yesterday we were emptying the diff out. We put a can underneath it, went away, left it, and it filled it up entirely to the top. That one's got nothing coming out. Anyway, yeah, I'm just continuing taking this all apart, having a really good look at it. Part of this is like understanding how it all works and how you can take it apart, should in the future I need to take it apart. Cleaning it all up, we're gonna be painting everything, making sure that the seals and everything, all the parts are good. But yeah, trying not to break anything at the same time. And uh, on the warmest day of the year today. So I might get my shorts back on. for me to get to my chalkboard because there's just so much stuff like piled up literally everywhere I've got nowhere to put my feet anyway before we wrap up this video I thought I'd just do a real quick uh, catch up on the old chalkboard list progress has been made since we last looked at it some pretty big progress actually I've got the leaf springs which are all magically finished so <laughs> So leaf springs are from the rear axle, the really massive ones. They are big tick, one and two. And obviously the leaf springs, the front ones, the slightly smaller ones, but still the massive ones, they are done as well. I had one little tick for the one that we did months ago, sitting there forlornly. So now it can uh, be matched by all the other ones. So that leaves us with, yep, so the radiator as well. Uh, finally, although we ran out of paint in our last video, we've been back, we've got some more paint, we finished that. So that's all done, along with all the other bits and bobs that go with it, like the shroud and the support brackets. Some time ago, we also finished the master cylinder, which is now bolted back on the chassis probably about three or four videos back now so that leaves us really at this moment in time with the giant massive front axle which if you listen carefully you can hear Tim battling with just in front of you or behind you in the tent I think he did oh, that no. That's basically the soundtrack to my life at the moment. There's a lot of cursing going on. I think he's having a bit of trouble. Do you need a hand with that? Uh. The giant massive front axle is indeed one of the very last of the big things left to dismantle and restore on this old Bedford. And like everything, it's a bit of a beast and a bit of a learning curve. But with experience comes a certain amount of confidence, not too much, let's not tempt fate, that bit by bit it will all come good in the end. What's that quote? Everything will be okay in the end. If it's not okay, it's not the end. It's not the end. Yeah, it's all coming apart pretty straightforward really. There's a lot more to one of the front axles as I was expecting. Although we've got manuals, they don't really sort of show you, and there's, there's gaps in them really, like 
it's not take how to take apart the whole thing. But what I'm doing at the moment is trying to take off, um, because it's all coming apart, I'm starting on the outside and going further in. So I'm taking off the brake drums, all the brakes, and then getting to the hubs, and then taking the um, axle ends off, the stub axle bits off them. I don't know what the correct name is. Get it right into the swivel hub part, and then I'm gonna take them off. It's a bit difficult being on axle stands now where this would have been easier attached to a chassis and a couple of like minor tools that we don't have, like a thing to remove the ball joints. But you know, it's all good. It's all coming apart. Take the brakes off and this is the first time I've ever seen inside of one of these. So it's each time it's like, okay, how do you do this? And what holds all that together? But it's all pretty straightforward. Just take off all, every nut and bolt you can find. <laughs> and it all comes apart. I think once the drum's off it, I can get the axle back on the floor and roll it over a bit more to access the uh, bottom steering arms and the top, um, so we can take the top arm and the bottom arm off. They have to come off to take the swivel hub off. I'll take the brakes off first. Hmm. Yeah. Brake lines have all um, sort of. Some of them have to. Uh, you have to be able to twist the um, the end of them. The female part of the fitting, and uh, quite often they just sort of corrode into place, and you can't. It won't swivel over the um, the brake line anymore. These are all steel brake lines. They've rusted together, and that means you can't undo one without. Uh, well, they're useless now. You can't, uh, it'll just, you can cut them off to remove them. I'm trying to keep stuff uh, in one piece at the moment. When I make some new ones, I've got a reference for it, um, the shape and everything. But I can do this, well, I'll, I'll take off the, um, the brake cylinder, unwind the brake cylinder off the back. But next, I've got to get that spring out and unbolt it all. The spring is tight. I've got to yeah, take the spring apart, uh, sp spring off, which is holding the shoes, pulls the spring shoes back in. But this is really, really tight. The back ones are quite easy to get off. But um, yeah, super tight. Uh, there is a bolt in the middle, but yeah, I don't know if that's the way you to do it, because it, if you take the bolt out, I don't know. I actually took the whole lot off in one go last time. I uh, separated, actually got the master uh, slave cylinder out, wheel cylinder and actually took the whole lot off together with the spring. But there must be another way of doing it because part of taking it apart is working out how you're gonna put it back together again, tidily. Springs attach in the middle. I managed to prise this one off, which then meant I could get that, uh, that out and take the pressure off them. So uh, that's them off. Now, let's see how tight these are. They're not too bad. Right, so, because I'm lazy. Lazy, but sometimes it takes longer because the nuts get stuck in the end. cylinder off and then I can take the whole backing plate off. One more nut at the top here I think and the whole backing plate will come off. But before that does, let's see if this will come off. Oh, it's 
think it's only going to take five seconds and just don't want to come off. Is it because you're being filmed? <laughs> yeah. As soon as the camera's on me, nothing works. holding it in. Right. Yeah, uh, on the other side some of the studs came out when I took these nuts off and that actually helped me out because it's, it's got to slide off all the studs to come off now. That may be, maybe if I take the uh, whole backing plate off in one go it will um, Maybe make it easier, or maybe not. We'll find out. No, I'm going to try and take the, uh, the shoes off. There's a there's a real chance that the whole um, the whole of this could come off now. So actually, I really need to get the brakes the shoes off first before I do that. Otherwise, I'm going to end up with too many bits in one go. shoes. This is two screws. Right, and the backing plate. Now, we're down to the uh, bit more of the axle. Now this piece actually just comes straight off here all the bolts around the insides of the um, backing plate here and that make up the brakes are actually also the same bolts which hold this end onto the the swivel housing so this would actually just pull straight off now and with it that part of the axle well, they've all got funny names and i don't know any of the names so that bit of it comes off as well so that's um that's all the brakes off it all i've got to do now really is take these parts off it and uh, we've got a bare axle ready to be cleaned up, painted, put back on the truck. How I'm going to put this back together again without damaging all the, the new paints and stuff, I have no idea, but we'll work that one out when we get there. Brakes apart. Hooray! Right, morning. So I'm back in the tent again this morning uh, with the axle. Uh, it's getting stripped down more and more, not that much left on it to take off. Uh, the drive shafts out of it and the ball bits on the end. My apologies for not knowing the exact names of all these parts. I've read them in one of the manuals, but I can never remember them. So the ball bits are coming off and the drive shafts, but that's nearly it stripped down in the tent. Uh, the pile over here is getting considerably bigger and it's a pretty greasy, dirty pile. My plan at the moment now is to leave the axle where it is in the tent here. That is going to get uh, the last bits taken out of it, as I said. It's probably going to get sandblasted, epoxy primed and painted all in the tent here. And then when that's done, it's going to get taken out of here and reattached onto the frame, onto the leaf springs and then I'll go through all the bits. Uh, that will probably mean there's a lot of cleaning, um, powder coating, some plating of bolts and some painting. Uh, going through all the parts like the bearings, 
gaskets, seals, anything like that, and trying to repair and replace what I can. And as they're all done, they will get bolted back onto the axle and uh, eventually it'll all be back in place and all hopefully brand new and working. First of all, I've got to work to the axle. it's been going recently. Helped so by the weather I think. We've had a run of really good weather as I'm sure everyone in the UK is aware after a pretty meh, summer. We've had a few weeks of really good weather in that we've been able to get lots done because we've not had any rain, we've not had any wind. It's been brilliant. Oh and also helped by a new compressor. Yes, so Tim was able to have just blast through all those leaf springs. I was pretty much gone for a couple of days and when I came back they were all done and they're all hung back into place, as you've seen, which is amazing. We were really worried about actually getting them hung back into place because they are insanely heavy. I mean, I can't even they're describe heavy. how heavy they are. And we, we just, rather than use brute force, we used a little bit of mind power and just worked out how we could do it, uh, which is quite often how we have to do things around here. I keep going around the back there and having a look at it all hung back together and it sort of makes me feel like it's coming back together again. Yeah, there is definitely quite a bit of light at the end of the tunnel now. It is getting closer. We're getting quite excited. The only fly in the ointment now is that we had to take apart, Tim had to take apart the massive front axle. So now that's just lying everywhere in all its filthy glory. I've just come in this afternoon and I've like got immediate palpitations, like seeing all that on the floor. Today's greasy, rusty part is tomorrow's beautiful, clean part. <sighs> Well, not tomorrow, but a yeah, day after maybe. One day this phase will be over and then we'll just look back fondly and laugh. So uh, yeah, and this means that getting really close now after the front axle, we are actually turning our attention to thinking, just thinking about the engine, which I'm looking at just over there behind you. So watch this space, everyone yeah it could be time yeah anyway that's the end of the video um thank you very much for watching if you've watched this far <laughs> well uh, done <laughs> thank you to all, uh, everyone who's uh, subscribed comments all on the videos it, it really does mean a, a huge amount to us still like uh, all the comments and thank yeah you. thanks ever so much to everyone for all your support all the way through this project welcome to um, any new subscribers it's great to have you here we've got lots to come you're joining us at just the really exciting part when it's starting to get really good so stick around for that and also as always huge thanks to our patrons as well um, there is a link to our patreon if anyone is interested in supporting us further with this project but yeah, just thanks to everyone. Right, and until next time. Better get a cup of tea now. Yep, see you later. See you later. Bye. Bye.